The first law of, cre of, of creation is talking. When God finished talking, you will hear him go to work. God was not sleeping. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, please show me there. Verse 5, the Bible said the evening and the morning were the first day. Now verse 8, the Bible said the evening and the morning were the second day. You will now see in verse 13, the evening and the morning were the third day. You will see verse 19, the evening and the morning were the fourth day. You will see verse 23, the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 31, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You will never read in the Bible that the morning and the evening. You will read the evening and the morning. Productivity starts at night. Implementation is in the daytime. While men were sleeping, transactions were going on. A little sleep, a little slumber. So shall poverty attack you like an armed man. So God was productive at night. God was walking. He will remove his, his kaftan and wear his jeans, his timberland boots, fold it up and begin to set all the, all the firmaments, every single thing in place. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible says that a day before the Lord is as a thousand years. A day before the Lord is as a thousand years. So when you hear a day, it's actually a thousand years. And if he did it for six days, take it from me, like 6,000 years day and night, God was working. So when you come and tell me that you want to go and live after three months, I know there's something wrong with your medulla oblongata. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, and God rested after he has finished. You are not permitted to rest until you have finished. Can somebody show me anywhere where the Bible says that and God was an employee of a Kennedy Little Transport? He was an employer. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created. When He created you, He created you to become a co creator. Yes, you may be working for somebody, you are there to learn, study, to show. There is a part of your life you must show. Show yourself approved after you have been tested and tried. A man rightly dividing. What are you made of? When God put man, the next thing he said, have dominion. It was not an advice, it was a command. God is not advising you to be rich. He commanded you. Your poverty is an insult to God. 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 45. It says if you are 20 years old, you are able to go to war. If you are 20 years old and you are still in your father's house, it's a shame. Stay with me. I expect you to get angry to find out how do you become independent now. Between the ages of 13 to 19, you should be training yourself to win, to dominate the market, to win, to dominate the market. So that by 20, you can take a decision. Tradition has held our boys and our women down. Stay in your house till they are 30, till they are 35 years old. Then when a man stays till 30 years old, what do you want the man to do? Because when cement has gotten dry, it becomes set. It becomes set. Stay with me, stay with me. It becomes set. It becomes set. The problem with Africa, Nigeria, River State is free food. Because anybody that gives you free food stops you from thinking. And when they stop you from thinking, they stop you from productivity. God had given them manna that they lost their manners before God. It had to take God to kill that whole generation except Joshua and kill him. Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, tradition has got to die. You need to kill it. Joshua, lead my people. Joshua chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says, And Joshua sent out two boys to go and spy the land. God will not give you a new instruction until you do the last one. You are where you are because you are not angry. Okay. Now. Uh, I will shake this house, don't worry. <laughs> uh, when you walk in faith, God shows up.
I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. But I'm afraid of a pack of sheep led by lions. I came here to raise lions. I came here to provoke you. I came here to disrupt you. I came here to set that fire inside you. No matter the recession in the forest, a lion will never eat grass. Monkey no the bongo. No. A lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fattest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fastest animal in the jungle. So if you ask the lion, did you pass your fastest animal exam? He will say no. Did you pass the longest animal in the jungle? He will say no. Did you pass the biggest animal in the jungle exam? He will say no. Did you pass the wisest animal in the jungle? So what did you get in, in fastest? F. What did you get in strongest? F. What did you get in this one? F. What did you get in this one? F. So in your school set exam, you get F, 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 F. No problem. But yet he's the king of the jungle. Your academics is not a guarantee for your success. Keep your first class one side. Keep your two one one side. Keep your two two one side. Show me your attitude. A lion will look at an elephant. He said, I will eat this. Because that is how he thinks. An elephant will see it and run away. It is not a function of your size. It is a function of your attitude. Walk to that person and say, you need to be in this platform. Otherwise, you'll look for me tomorrow. Start talking to them now. Stop pitying them. Time is ticking. Tick tock. Tick tock. Where are my lions? Can I hear you say, Ahu? So at this point in time, it is important that you know that decisions make men. What decision do you want to take today? What decision do you want to happen in your life? What decision do you want to see in five years' time? Everybody overestimates what you can accomplish in one year, but you underestimate what you can accomplish in five years. Stop thinking short term. Think about the long term. Money follows attention. You are too quiet for success. Once you make noise, you command attention. Hey. We don't show, we don't show. Everybody was born naked. Everybody. There is nobody I know that came out with shoes. iPad, Blackberry, nobody. Everybody came out naked. The only thing a baby comes out to is the fear of falling down and the fear of a loud noise. Every other thing you learned, you learned to be poor. So if they're going to be successful, you have to unlearn poverty and learn success. Unlearn poverty and learn success. I was tired of, of 1,000, 5,000, 20,000. I was tired. My brother, small money is bad. So I wrote on my wall 100 million. I wrote it on the wall, big with paper. I will lie down by my bed on the floor. When I wake up, it's 100 million. I see. I wrote it on my ceiling, 100 million. When I turn like this, 100 million. Turn like this, 100 million. In my bedroom. Turn like this, 100 million. My toilet, when I'm sitting on the throne, 100 million. This book will not pass me by. Whatever you look on, once there is a will, there will always be a way. I put a target on my mind, 100 million, and I put a time, one year, one year. When you put a target and a time, direction will appear. What is your target? What time do you have? When you put a time and a target, you turn to a madman. The world does not, does not excuse the road for, for human beings. It's when you are mad, the road will clear.
stop thinking about 500,000. When you have a time and a target, everything changes. Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, my mentor, my boss, says in Africa, when a gazelle wakes up, it has to run faster than the fastest lion, otherwise it will be eaten. It says also in that same Africa, when a lion wakes up, it has to run faster than the fastest and, um, um, gazelle, otherwise it will, it will, I mean, faster than the fastest gazelle, otherwise it will not eat. The moral of the story is whether you are a gazelle or a lion, or when you wake up, love all you want. I am too busy building an empire. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to say thank you for joining us today. It's going to be a great day today. Yeah, that's what I believe. Um, last night was awesome, was amazing. I got quite a lot of feedback um, between yesterday night and now. And um, tonight is not going to be an exception. It, it's it's going to be exceptional. It's mm -hmm. not going to be an exception. We're going to have a great time like we actually did last night. My name is Bolaji Babalola, and I'm the host of 
the startup conference. Mm -hmm. Now, someone might say, why startup conference? Actually, it's designed to equip um, and, um, you know, empower and inspire business leaders all over Africa, entrepreneurs everywhere, because the strength of every um, nation is actually their entrepreneurs the productivity that each individual can bring on board. So we we are actually, we structured this in such a way that it's going to help you enhance your profitability, your productivity, and your performance. I want to say thank you to those joining us on Facebook, on Instagram, and live on YouTube. Um, I wanted to drop in the comment section, if you were here yesterday, what were the things you learned and how, um, how it actually touched your life, right? How it touched your business, how it touched you personally, right? So you can drop that in the chat box. Um, our first speaker tonight is getting set. We have two speakers tonight. We have Nia Tiba and we have Alfred Baker. You know what I called Alfred Baker? I call him the king of the north. Alfred is from Jersey and he's doing great things in that city he's got a lot of young people that he influences on daily basis right he's a great man and i respect him and i honor him and i know he has value to give to you tonight so i'm, I'm expecting to see in the chat in the comments in the comment section the things you actually learned yesterday and the next steps you're going to take right to fulfill the things we said remember some of the things i told you I was I explained the fact that if you are going to change the narrative on the outside, it's got to start from within, right? If you are going to change the narrative outside, it's going to start from within. If you don't change it from within, there's no way you can change it from outside. I played a video um, where Dr. Von King took me into his restroom. For those who saw those videos, that video, if you have not seen it, you can go back online to check it out right he, he took me into his into his um gents and he, he put this glass cup with dirty water actually stained the water with um coffee then he put it under the tap opened the tap and within a few seconds the dirt inside the cup actually because of the overflow the dirt actually went out and he said to me that this is how life is Many of us, by the family, by the society, by the environment, by the happenings in life, life experiences and all that, we, we, have, we have come to build some um, belief system in ourselves. We've come to build some uh, um, value system, you know, and these things are self-sabotaging because they are negative systems. So he said the way to get rid of those negative systems is how? to keep pouring inside yourself, keep pouring information inside yourself. And I tell people two things. Number one, we grow old and we grow up, right? Note that we grow old, we grow up. Growing old is natural. We grow old naturally. Every time you go to bed, you wake up, you're growing older, right? It might not be written on your forehead, but the truth is every 24 hours, that runs by each day, you grow older. But growing up has to be intentional. And that's why we are doing this designing your experience. So you've got to redesign your experience. Last night, I shared with you one, you, you have to reprogram your mind. You've got to reprogram your mind, right? Um, how many of you have had the story of that elephant, the baby elephant? The elephant was younger and it was tied to a, to a stick. The stick was strong enough to hold the elephant when the elephant was young. But a couple of years after, the elephant was bigger, but because he was used to tied, he was used to being tied to that stick, he felt he still couldn't pull it, even though he was older now, he was um it was older now. So sometimes the things that are actually holding us back in business, in life, in marriage, or whatever it is you're looking at. The, the, the thing that is holding us back actually is in our mind, right? So you've got to reprogram your mind. Remember, the second thing I said yesterday was information. You've got to be hungry. Dr. Von King said, hunger is the gift of God to man. If you are not hungry, you won't go look for food. Listen carefully. I say it often. When you're watching TV, you're watching a movie, or you're watching soccer, and you are not hungry, you will still be there. But the moment something kicks in within you that tells you, oh boy, your tummy is empty and 
you are actually playing with fire. You get into the kitchen and you cook. Now, this is the point. This is the point for everyone who has a business. Listen to this carefully. The kitchen is the production stage. And in that place, there is eat. Every time you are in the kitchen, there is eat because of the things they are making happen for people. People who cannot stand the eat cannot eat because you have to leave the kitchen. You can't stand the eat in the kitchen. You cannot eat. That's it about life. So in entrepreneurship, there is eat. In business, there is eat. In leadership, there is eat. Whatever it is you want to do that would actually touch the lives of hundreds or thousands of people, you will find it, right? So the point now is, can you stand the eat? Because if you cannot stand the eat, you will not eat. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. Ayo, Ayo, thank you. Thank you for joining tonight. Hunger is a gift of God to man. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you know, the, the interesting thing about life, I said, I shared yesterday what Dr. Wong King normally said to us about diet. Because one of the things I said about redesigning your experience is changing your diet. If you don't change the things you consume, there's no way, no way you can change, you can affect things outside. You've got to change what goes inside first. The vulture and the eagle, they are from the same family, but what sets them apart is their diet. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your background is about. I don't really care what village you were given birth to. But the point is, you might not be able to change the past, but you can change the future. And it starts from the things you consume right now from this moment right so your diet which is information hunger is the gift of god to man listen carefully if there's nothing like hunger let's look at this would we die dehydrated because we won't know we, we won't really know we won't know if, if if we if we if we do not feel that thing within us that says oh boy your tummy is empty you've got to go for something if, if we do not feel that, do you know many of us, we go years without eating because there's nothing in our system that is pricking us to eat the same thing in life. If you do not feel that passion, if you are not driven, if you are not driven, forget it. Success do not. Have you heard people say the, 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 the patient dog eats the fattest bone? I, I don't know if it used to happen then, but let me tell you the truth. If you're on this call, if you're watching this video today, let me tell you, it doesn't happen any longer today. The patient dog does not eat the fattest bone. As a matter of fact, the patient dog these days will have no bone to eat. You've got to be driven. You've got to be passionate. You've got to be hungry. You've got to go for it. Let me quote the Bible. You, you, you know what I'm saying? The Bible says that the, the, the violent have to take it by force these days. So in business also, you want to take your share of the market, you've got to take it by force force right if you want to redesign your experience another thing i need to let you know is that there are several ways into the market there are several ways into the market and if you if you are a Yoruba guy from the southwestern part of nigeria you understand what i mean when parents say to us that they, they say to us that there are several ways that enters the market right several ways that enters the market several ways that enters the market what does that mean that means you do not let me Put this in context where our businesses are concerned or our projects are concerned right when you try something and it's not working do not ever say it can work because one way never worked doesn't mean another way won't work if you want to take over your industry always know this is one of the things i tell my staff you do not come to me and say i've tried it one way and it's not working because there are more than one way to enter the market so if you want to take over your market your industry you want to take your share of the old deal let me tell you the truth there are several ways to do it if the first way is not working the second way is not working the third way is not working try one more time the fourth way might work right so it's very very important one of the things we shared again yesterday was the fact that you need a mentor because there are people who know the way there are people who know the way, right? So you've got to follow those who know the way, right? We say it in our local parlance. We say it in our local parlance. We say, follow who know road, right? You've heard that before. The same thing in life. Follow who know road. So tonight, I've brought two of my friends, my darling friends, and they're amazing. I want them to speak to us tonight, and I know that Dr. Triple A is ready, right? Yesterday night was amazing. Go back to the pages, watch them, go to my YouTube channel, follow me on YouTube. Dr. Triple A, how are you tonight? I'm very good, sir. How are you doing? Woo! 
Yeah. <laughs> good evening, ready, bro. ready, ready, ready. Good yeah, evening. I'm ready. Hope you're good, good evening. today. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready good. Tonight. Yes, I am. I'm ready, as ready as We've I can been be. Waiting, we can't wait any longer. Thank you very much, sir. Great. Glad All to right, be so here tonight. Take it up from All here, right. my brother. Okay, so good evening, Your Excellencies. How are you doing today? It's going to be an amazing time tonight. I, I promise you that. Um, I'm ready for you. Are you ready? I'm, I'm very, very ready. And of course, um, I'm going to be sharing with you tonight uh, sales domination strategies for business owners and for entrepreneurs. And, and I promise you, it's going to be pretty amazing. So uh, I hope you're just ready. I hope you're ready with your notes. I hope you're ready with your part. I hope you're ready with your mind. And you know what? It's okay to pay money to learn some things, but the greatest thing, the greatest currency that you must never joke with in life is your attention. So tonight, I want you to give me your attention. So uh, I'm going to share uh, my slides with you, um, with you immediately. Okay. Trying to get the slides on. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for us tonight? Beautiful. Good. All right. So I want to share with you sales domination strategies for entrepreneurs and business owners like I talked about, and uh, the key strategy is to help you stand out so that you can make all the money that you want to make. You know, um, you can stand out, you can get more customers and make more money. And I know that when a lot of people hear that, everybody's excited. So um, let's, let's just do that. All right. So I'm going to move forward quickly. Beautiful. All right. So this is just a bit of what I do. Uh, I'm a business coach. Um, I'm a retirement planning expert, sales management consultant. I'm a business growth strategist, a social media domination expert. And of course, I'm the director of the Dr. Triple A company. Next slide. Why should you listen to me? I want to tell you that it's very important that you take it of what I'm about to tell you, because for about, about eight years now, um, I've successfully taught and coached different salespeople, individuals, business owners about secrets you know, to help them in their business. And I, no joke, I mean, I've been around public sector, private sector, and all these things. And they, I've been featured on, of course, on TV, on radio, and all, you know, a, a lot of, even some social media platforms have been online to share my experiences. And I must tell you that um, it's been worth a while. Of course, like I told you, um, I run this wonderful platforms um, re present right now. Not not much time, but if you want to know more about me, I always tell people just Google online and look for Dr. Triple A. But my Instagram handle is, of course, I am Dr. Triple A. All right. So let's go on. What's a strategy? What is a strategy? A strategy, Your Excellencies, is actually, you know, a devised, carefully devised plan. All right. Is a carefully devised plan to help you achieve your goal. It's a carefully defined plan to help you achieve your goal, all right? Very important. And um, it's also the heart of developing or carrying out such a plan. So an example, of course, is a business strategy, okay? So you create a, a plan, step-by-step -step plan that you want to use to achieve something. So tonight, I want to share with you step-by-step -step plans that will help you to actually dominate your industry so that you can stand out get more customers, of course, make more money. So let's go on um, quickly. Uh, my objective, like I told you, is to show you key strategies to do exactly what I talked about. Uh, but first, I like to share some background information whenever I'm doing uh, my presentation. I want to share some things with you that will actually, you know, put some good perspective to mind. Um, number one, I want you to know that as of May 2021, the interesting thing was that the total population of Africa amounted to over 1.37 billion people. Can you understand that? Can you just get that? 1.37 billion people. That means that you are one in 1.37 billion. In fact, in fact, the truth of the matter is I would actually have given you a global statistics, but because we're talking to African business owners, I, I try to limit the scope of my discussion to Africa. So are you ready? Let's go on. Okay, so beautiful. Um, Look at this information. Now, this is an African ranking. Now, according to the quality of entrepreneurial 
environment, South Africa has produced presently has 32.9 out of a hundred out of a hundred South Africans, 32.9 of them are actually business owners. Look at Namibia, 31.1 out of a hundred are actually business owners. So you can say that 31.1% of the population are actually what business owners. I mean, can you imagine? Look at Morocco, look at Egypt, 25.9. Uh, Morocco 29.2, look at Algeria 24.7, look at Rwanda 21.5, look at Ghana, we're, we're talking about um, 21 out of 100, and Nigeria, just 19.7%, 19, 19 all right? Now, listen, out of 2020, the best African country that actually possesses the best facilities that will accommodate businesses, interestingly, is Mauritius. When, when, I, when I saw this, I was like, should we ship country? <laughs> you know, because the score for, you know, they, 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 they're great at facilitating businesses, they're great at helping businesses, and um, they, they actually score at 81.5%, right? 81.5%. That's a, that's, a, that's a very, very crucial something. Don't you think so? Now, of course, you look at um, uh, countries like Rwanda, Morocco, and Kenya, you know, the, and Kenya exceeds, you know, they exceed 73%. But this is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. This is the bottom line that you need to understand. We, I'm just laying some background information. Is that business motivation for male entrepreneurs, I found out, revolve around what? Profit. Now, that's number one. Growth or capital. But the female entrepreneurs focus more. They lean towards more towards social impact. All right? So when they create their products, their services, they're leaning more. Uh, um, as against you know social impact via creating products, um, their service, and of course their, their specific industries, right? But the male uh, entrepreneurs focus more on profit, growth, and capital, and that's quite interesting. Um, if you if you if you if you follow my drift, but the question now is, how do you increase sales? How do you increase sales? And that's a question that a lot of people um, want to answer. And how do you beat your competition? Because whether you like it or not. We all have competition. We have a competition. Like I told you, 1.37 billion. That's one in three, 1.37 billion. And look at that. Look at that. Um, in Nigeria alone, that's 19.7. 97% out of 100. So out of our entire population of over 200 million, we're saying that 19.7% of that population are entrepreneurs. Right? Um, in all the countries all over the world, you know, um, all over Africa, you can also, like I shared those statistics with you. So that means that you've got to learn how to beat your competition. And um, what is the answer? How do you learn? How do you increase your sales? And how do you beat your competition? How do you do that? The answer is rebranding. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Because, you know, um, I'm, I'm a man that likes to meditate. I, I go eat within myself. And um, I was looking also at research. So research that's the environment plus the environment put it together and i found out you know over time and that, that's some of the things that you need to understand that you need to have a rebranded mindset um you know but like you about i shared with you yesterday about a lot of processes okay shared a lot of processes with you yesterday i love the stories she shared amazing stuff so i want you to put this quickly to mind and uh, what is rebranding Rebranding is a marketing strategy in which a new name, a term, symbol, design, or combination thereof is created for an established brand. It's an established brand already, but a new identity is crafted for it. The reason why a lot of people are still where they are is because they still have the old wineskin mentality. You need to have a new wineskin mentality. You cannot put new wine into a old wine wineskin. What happens is it busts. I mean, you know, because let me tell you why. Because the new wine will continually expand. Are you are you with me? So we are creating a new a new a new identity, new symbol, a new name, a new design, new combination, changing the face, changing the skin, changing the way that brand dresses, how that brand is perceived, how that brand feels. And we're changing all that in the mind of consumers, in the mind of investors, competitors, and other stakeholders. So that when it comes back to mind, what happens is that it's able to increase sales. Because a lot of us, 
the level that we're operating right now, we're operating far beneath our potential. Oh, so much stuff to say, but let's start. Why do you need to, to, to rebrand? It's so that you can di differentiate your business or service in the mind of your target market with the aim of acquiring more, what? Market share. You what? You differentiate, you stand out. You push yourself to stand out. All right? You change the way you're perceived. So yeah, you've been doing business all this while, but now it's time to take your business to the next level. It's time to redesign your business. It's time to redesign your experience. It's time to redesign the way you're perceived in the mind of people. It's time to take your business, make it more professional. Some of us need to change a lot of processes and all that. And I, I quickly just, you know, I'm just going to just share with you so many things to say. Like I said, three major reasons you need to rebrand is number one, you need to differentiate your business from your competitors. I'm telling you, in, in, in just in your area alone, I know that you, a lot of us have a lot of, you know, your business in your area alone, you've got a lot of people who actually do what you do. So you've got to be able to differentiate the way you act, the way you behave, the way you perceive, the way you move. Are you with me? All right? The way an, a, a, the Honda car moves is different from the way the, the Toyota moves, right? So you've been doing things a long time. Now it's time to change the face of your business so that, you know, when you stand, when you, when you, when you show up, when your brand shows up in the market, people know what you stand for and then you, you change. So that's one of the reasons why you need to rebrand too, is to remain relevant to consumers in a changing marketplace. The marketplace is ever changing. And I know you understand that the most constant, most constant thing in life is change. Everybody changes, right? Number three is so that you can relaunch a product or service so it can become more profitable. That's one of the reasons that, you know, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to dominate your market, you got to rebrand. you got to repackage. you got to understand that you either innovate or you die. Oh, my God. I hope you're getting what I'm saying here. It's very important. Very, very important. All right? Yeah? Okay. Now... The background to branding is very key. The background to branding brand is very key. Number one, I want to share with you that you are already a brand. You are already a brand. Yes, you are already a brand. So you've got to be careful how you present yourself. I want to share with you quickly and let you understand the concept of branding just for those of us who really don't have, you know, maybe you don't understand it so, so, so deep. But let's just touch it, right? So if you look at the concept of branding, you look at, Customer service is part of, your, of, of the face of the, of, the, of the brand. How do you relate with your customers? We're talking about um, the company name, how the company name is positioned. Your company name is very important. How you sound, what you are called is very key. All right? Your logo is key. Now, strong impression. What strong impression do you give out? It's part of your branding. All right? Um, your, your strong impression must be repeated, all right? The value proposition, how do you give value to the people? How are they fed? How are they positioned to receive value from you? How are you positioned to give value to them? The price of your product or service, and then the, the benefits of your product and services are part of your brand, right? Okay, but first off, let's sidetrack a bit, right? <laughs> Thank you, Adir, okay? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, innovate or die, Amaka, I'm telling you. So what is branding? Branding is the process of creating and disseminating your brand name. Already I told you that it's, it's your, you're a brand. So let me tell you something. Whether you're an individual, whether you're a corporate person, whether you're an NGO, I don't care whatever it is that you are. One, of, one thing I do care about is you need to understand that you are a brand. All right. So what is branding? It is a process of creating and disseminating your brand name. You're letting everybody become aware of what you are, what you stand for, what you offer, the value that you are giving to the people. Right. Number two, it's that it's a marketing practice of creating the name, a symbol or design that identifies and differentiates a product from others. And let me tell you something. If you're doing a brand strategy, the brand strategy that is effective is the one that gives you a major edge in increasing your competitive, increasingly, um, in increasing your competitive market. Okay, so you increase in your competitive market. Okay, my sister, I feel you. All right. 
So you got to <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> All right. So you know, you 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 got to keep on, right? You got to keep on increasing your competitive edge. So when you uh, you succeed with your brand strategy, what you what you realize is that you discover that your sales starts to increase. You start to have an edge over your competition because you are doing very well. That's a that's a test, a very simple test to find out whether your branding strategy is actually good or not. So what a brand is not. Let's look at what a brand is not. I always like to start from the other side, you know, before I come to the side. So what a, what what what's a, what what a brand is not. A brand is not a name. Uh, so it's Breckett, Benkisa, Globe, GT Bank, uh, Chevron, Panadol, Clean Pin. Yeah, all these things, Unilever, all these things, the Dr. Blee Company, all that makes you know about the company. But that's not just the name. I mean, that's not just the, the name is not just a brand, my dear. Let's move on. Okay. Number two, a brand is not a logo. The fact that you got a mwah, lovely logo. Does not mean, let me tell you, I know a lot of businesses that don't have beautiful logos that they do well. So it's not about the logo, right? Number three, your brand is not, it's not a color. Okay, so some of us will go and say, you know what, I, mean, I want mint green. No, <laughs> you know, you want mint green, you want, you want army red, cockroach brown, um, cattle color, all those colors. You know, women have those colors, man. You know, peach green, peach, uh, peach color, um, tomato red, you know, um, all sort blood red, you know, and all that is sky green, sky is you no know, sky blue, all those colors, right? But that's not your brand, that's not what your brand is, right? Your brand is not a slogan, just do it. I know you know what I'm saying, what a feeling that's not your brand. Wash is brighter than it shows. We deliver in 30 minutes or less. I'm sure you can, you have a bit of, um, you can grab what those organizations, the names behind those organizations, right? But that's not just a brand, right? So some of us think it's just about the tagline. It's not just about the tagline. Your brand is not even a company. So you, whether you're Kellogg's or, or Puma or Gillette or uh, UPS or Coca-Cola or Pampers, that's not, it's not just the company itself. No, not just that right it's not just that it's not an advert so you you take all your money and yet you make noise say that's our brand no that's not your brand that's not your brand sweetheart what is a brand what a brand is let's go what a brand is a brand is a promise you hold people to i mean sorry people hold you to it's a promise that people hold you to so people say to you i mean you say to people you know what we're going to deliver in 30 minutes or less and you deliver in 30 minutes or less so it's not just saying it it's doing it it's not just saying it, it's doing it. So when you make a promise and you keep it, you're growing your brand. Let's go on. Your brand, a brand is a consistent experience people have when they use your product or service. I always tell people that there are four emotions that, you, that people will have from you as an individual or as a corporate body, right? It's either when they meet you, they're glad or they're sad or they're mad or their fad. Now, before you ask me what fad is, fad means that you're just indifferent. So there are many people that come to you, they don't pick up nothing, they don't learn, they're not better, they're not worse. I mean, they just walk away from you, nothing, nothing added, no value added, right? So a brand is a consistent experience that people have when they use your product or service, when they interact with your company, when they interact with your person, when they interact with your message, and when they interact with all that is you, your color, all that stuff, or your name, your company. When they interact with you, what kind of experience do they take away with them? That is a brand. A brand is a feeling or perception that people live with when they leave your presence. So when they live with you, what feeling do they go with? I try as much as possible, you know, and I love what, I love what the good book says. He said, as much as you can, he said, try to be at peace with all men. I think that's a good, that's a good brand strategy. Try to be at peace with all men. It's a, it's a beautiful brand strategy, right? So that when people leave you, they, they walk away peaceful, they walk away joyful, they, not tearful, uh, not, 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 no, 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 uh, you know, not, not, not with a greenness on their face. You know, with that, you know, no, no, not that. We're talking about people walking away with beautiful energy. And a brand is a some perception of how people 
in your immediate community and industry, how they see you, the sum of the perception, how do they see you, how do they view you in their heart? And I love what the master said, said, how, what do you, what do men say that I am? Who do men, sorry, who do men say that I am? That, that's a question on branding. You need to ask the people around you. You need to ask your customers, who do you think I am? Who do you think we are? How are you feeling us? How are you experiencing us? Are you enjoying what we have to offer you? Are you, are you, getting, are you getting better? So in summary, a brand is an intangible marketing or business concept that helps people identify your company, your product, and your individuality. And they enable the buyer to easily identify the offerings of a particular company. I was just trying to, you know, and it's, they're generally developed all through time. Over time, true number one adverts. All right, so your brand is not an advert, but, a, but your advert is important to building your brand. So, you, and your adverts must contain what? Consistent messaging. Consistent, look, you don't change. Let me tell you something. Today, you tell us that you deliver in 30 minutes or less. Tomorrow, you tell us you deliver in 10 minutes or less. Next day, you say, sorry, we deliver in 15 minutes or less. No, 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 it's got to be consistent. So your brand grows over time based on on consistent promises that's what we're saying recommendations from friends so referrals right so because you're doing well you, look, let me tell you something every customer that you do good to builds your brand it helps you stand out it's a sales strategy that has never failed over the years for me never failed not even for the best of the sales people not even for the best of of of, of, the, of, of, of those um, of the top successful entrepreneurs and business owners that i know and i worked with i worked with a lot of them I work with a lot of them. I can tell you that interactions with your business and needs representatives. What I mean, how do people walk away from your business? I'm, I'm still saying it was well, a feeling they work with the interactions, the level that you know that when you lose one customer, you're losing automatically using a minimum of eight people. Um, and it's progressive. It's geometric in nature. Because when you lose eight people, they also have eight people that won't buy from you. And it just keeps on increasing. So look at that ratio. It's crazy. All right. And of course, your brand will grow through real life experiences. When people use your product and your service, they talk about it. It grows. It, it, it is, it's established in their mind. And that is very, very key. And your brand stronger. Number two, the values. What are the most important values? What's most important to you? Very, very key. And why does it impact your business? Why does it impact your business?
waste our life time because time is your life. When somebody wastes your time the first time, it's their fault. If that person wastes your time the second time, it's your fault. Every minute, every second of the day we spend, we open our eyes like this, your life is being spent. Because there are two things we do with time. You invest it or you spend it. Listen to this carefully. Because of the country in which we live in, we work 30 days, we collect money. If you are in the West, you live in a developed country, you know that for every money you give out, you are giving your time. Because you earn per time. They tell you you are earning $100 per hour. So the moment I give you $100, I know that's one hour. So there is a time to money in developed countries. But why we are where we are today in this part of the world is because we do not even know the value of our time in currency form. My name is Bolaji Babalola. I'm a capacity building strategist. I help business owners and entrepreneurs to do more. I want to talk to startups. I want to talk to entrepreneurs about starting from where they are. I've heard a lot of business owners say to me that I don't have this. That's why I've not started this. I don't have this. I'm waiting for this. And what I wanted to know, listen to my statement very well. If you wait to get it, you will never get it. It's that simple. If you wait to get it, you will never get it. Listen, look at great corporations today. None of them started with everything intact. They started with what they had, right? So you've got to start with what you have. You know, there's an inspiring story I found in the Bible. And it's the story of the sons of the prophet. And they said to their master, I call him the mentor. They said to their mentor that where we are is too small for us. Let's go and get wood. Let's go and get plants. Let's expand where we are. They actually desired a new level. Now, they got to where they were cutting the wood. And something happened. The axe head fell. The axe they were using to cut the tree fell. This is what caught my attention. The guy said, it was boring. Now, this is the point. That means they didn't have everything all together when they said to their mentor, let us go and expand the place where we are. We really desire a change. They didn't have everything all together, but they took a step. A lot of us, we are sitting on the same spot. In our business, we can't scale it. We can't develop it. We can't grow. We have not started projects. We've not started reaching out to our markets. Why? Because I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have that. Listen, let me say that again. Nobody had it all together when they started. Great corporations today they started with what they have, right? If you wait before you get it, before you start, you will never get it. So you've got to start from where you are. Those guys actually desired expansion. They wanted to scale up their business. They wanted to improve their life, but they didn't have it all together. So they went out to see where they could get the access, the tools needed. A lot of time you need information. You've got to approach those who have it. What you need might not be tools in the physical sense, right? It might be a change of mindset. It might be a change of environment. Just go for what you need. You don't need to have it before you step up, right? There's one of my teachings where I thought about how to get the things you need for what you intend to do. So as an entrepreneur or individual, whatever it is you do, don't wait until you get it before you start. Because if you wait till you get it, you will never get it, right? Thank you for watching this video. I hope somebody is going to take a step today. Look for someone who has something that you need and go into partnership and make this thing work. My name one more time is Bola Jibabalala. I am just your boy. I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. But I'm afraid of a pack of sheep led by lions. I came here to raise lions. I came here to provoke you. I came here to disrupt you. I came here to set that fire inside you. No matter the recession in the forest, a lion will never eat grass. Monkey no the bongo. No. A lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. A lion is not the fattest animal in the jungle. A lion Hello, Your Excellencies. Um, I'm back. I'm sorry. I'm sure that um you enjoyed the video and uh, <laughs> that was uh really really yeah thank you so much val i'm i'm so glad you you got that very very important very very important that is very very key so i was talking about the elements of you know uh, of a brand you know those things that you need that actually they must you must actually get them i mean they're very very critical for you to understand. They're very, very important for you to get. 
Um, I said the value, what is most important to you and your business? How does it impact you? I talked about your goals. And I said that that is very key. Um, uniqueness, how do you differ from your businesses? I mean, from other businesses around you, even if you're in the same industry, because that's the thing. And I'm going to talk more about that in just a bit. The style, what will your words convey? Will your, st your style convey, you know, that fine boy, cute boy approach or the cute agbiru approach that, you know, that Ogi was talking about? You know, or um, are you going to be that Raz person? You know, whatever it is, it's got to be a style that your customers connect with. It's very critical, very important. Your name, is your name going to be formal? You know, um, because you see, the, your name will convey to us whether you're um, very serious minded or you're very informal or whatever it is. And that is very key. So there are names you can, you can never choose if you're running a business. Your tagline. Can you communicate your most effective, your most important benefit in just a few words? Wash is brighter than it shows. <laughs> you know what? We deliver in 30 minutes or less. 30 minutes or less. Your logo. What graphical element can you create that embodies the essence of your business offering? Right? And attracts the eyeballs. I mean, when I see your logo, what comes to my mind? It, the color you know, the provocativeness of the, of, of the logo and all those things are very critical. Your visuals, the stuff that you're going to use, you know, your marketing materials, you know, your stuff and everything. You know what? It's very important that you understand this because you, you notice that Dr. Triple E uses a lot of red, you know, red, black, white. I mean, I'm sure you see it. You know, it's very important and very critical because you know what? It's got, look, it's, it, it's a for a reason, right? And why, why do we use navy blue also? Because it's very important that you understand that it conveys some level of formality to let you understand the seriousness with which, you know, we take your business. So these things are very key. You don't just choose colors for no reason. And I'm going to show you that also in just a bit. Every smart person rebrands at one time or the other. I'm telling you, the rebrand at one time or the other. Let me show you this. Look at the beliefs, the promise, the story. They are parts of your brand. Look at Target. Uh, I'm going to show you foreign, foreign brands and then Nigerian brands, right? Foreign brands, uh, I'll also show you some African brands also. Target, you see how Target used to be. Uh, Target differed. Look at Starbucks, how Starbucks used to be. It differs. Look at Coca-Cola. Do you know how many times Coca-Cola changed their bottle? Let me tell you, innovation is the order of the game. If you're not getting better, you're getting bitter. <laughs> Can I say that again to somebody? If you're not getting better, you're getting bitter. That means if you're getting better, that means you're getting worse off. That means you're getting sore and eventually the customers will speed you out of the mouth. You know what I'm talking about? So if Coca-Cola can rebrand and Coca-Cola spends a lot of amount of money on marketing, you know what I'm saying? It's very important that you two, you learn to rebrand. If it's not working, stop. Hello? Don't keep spending money. Stop. Stop everything. Go back. Go back to your planning table. Go back to your strategy table. Employ a consultant like myself or Bolaji, blah, 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 blah. You know, and 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 let's 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 break these things down for you. If it's not working, you got to you got to change the way it looks. It's very important. Look at McDonald's. Look at McDonald's. McDonald's change stuff. You know, just change their stuff. Now let's come to Nigeria. See what happened. Fidelity, Fidelity was looking so green and so looking formal, and then they, they, they thought, you know what? Let's make it a bit, you know, a bit youthful and sassy, and they changed their their stuff. Look at FCMB. FCMB was just that, you know, that plain blue um you know very 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 dark dark blue with you know those um you know very light brown you know bars and they changed to purple and what gold bars look at unilever unilever changed it you see that unilever logo that you're seeing is a combination of all the products that they have you would you look at it closely you see what i'm talking about look at inter switch In, inter switch can switch mm, you should switch <laughs> you know what i'm talking about mastercard they changed their level too because they became masters. You see how they made it more simple? Look at Union Bank. Union Bank was that old, you know. <clears throat> let me be careful so they don't sue me. You know what I'm talking about? Look at them now. They're young. You know, they're hopping. You know what I'm talking about? So if you see all these guys changing, you got to change. And here are some brand attributes that you and other people relate with. Let me tell you something. If your customers can relate with it, if you can relate with it, your customers will relate with it because your customers are also human beings, right? Um, quality service. Who does not want quality service? I mean, if you have quality service, how will you not sell better? It's part of your brand attribute, right? Are you trustworthy? Are you reliable? Do you have integrity? 
right? Do you have character? Can I trust you with my money? Can I trust you that you will deliver on what that I, I mean, you promise and what you promise? I mean, I'll buy from you. Are you fun? Are you attractive? Are you compelling? Wow. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Because there's some brands that are compelling. You know, they're just attractive. You know, they, they have this sex appeal from afar. They, they, they attract you. And then, the, you know, the, are, you, are, you, are you caring or empathic? You know, does your brand come across as caring? Um, does your brand solve problems? Does your brand listen? How do we know you listen? We know you listen because we complained and you did something about it, right? Okay, are you adaptable? Are you quick to adapt to situations in the market, right? Even investors, even people, your customers, even stakeholders, they will love your brand if you can listen, if you're adaptable. If you're innovative, it's a powerful point, powerful tool for you to have. Are you creative? Are you creative with the way you use your stuff and all these things? And then, of course, um, state of the heart, these things are very, very critical. Now, I want to say to you that if you want to succeed in, in life, in your chosen industry, you must learn to make your brand attributes stand out. All these things must stand out. You must be able to do all those things. Um, you must um, learn. Thank you so much. You must learn to think and act like a great brand. That's very, very important. Think and act as a great brand. I love the guy behind me. <laughs> you, Ali, I'm feeling you. I'm telling you. I must tell you. All right. Um, characteristics of a, of a very successful brand. Uh, this is very key. Take a look at some of the characteristics. And this is key. When I found it out years ago, changed the way I did everything. Increased my market, increased my, 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 uh, my market share 10%. Can you believe it? So this is key. I want you to listen to this. A great brand is intentional in all its ramifications. Very, very intentional in all its ramifications. I'm telling you, very, very intentional. That means that success is intentional. If you are not intentional with what you do, you're going to get in trouble. That a great brand has its own color code. Notice I didn't say color. I said color code. In other words, you have a collection of color. You have a very specific now for those of you that use canva to design or those of you that are aware of canva and all that you see that canva has uh, numbers of colors the colors have numbers if you are a graphics person you understand what i'm talking about but um, that you have uh, something that we call color color code color patterns color numbers right so you 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 can actually specify and you know right the specific color once you have that particular color the number you can actually pinpoint that color. So as a great brand, you've got to have that color, you know, in your mind. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, a great brand has a great name. You've got to have a great name. It's not just any name. And I've seen a lot of businesses, you know, you know, hit themselves. Uh, I'm going to show you some, some excellent, great, wonderful, magnificent, beautiful names in just a bit. Let's go on. Just follow me. Every great brand offers a unique experience. I told you about that because that is very critical. Uh, let me move forward. How do you rebrand and position yourself? How do you make all the money? These are the strategies now that I want to show you quickly uh, because I've got to rush. My time is, is rushing. How do you move from this to this? Can you see? Can you see that lady looking plain to that lady that's carrying your know, dress in a baker's outfit, you know, carrying that stuff? I'm going to show you a name very soon. Let's follow. How, how do you move from this to this? Come on now. How do you move from this to this? Right? Beautiful looking lady. This was very plain. Look at her hair kept to this beautiful looking lady. Um, how do you move from this? Oh, how do you move from this with bread? Selling bread for leaving to becoming a supermodel, right? That's part of it, isn't it? How do you become the one that is featured on this day style? A name is Olajumoke Urisaguna. She was the girl who was a street seller and all of a sudden photo bombed, you know, T.Y. Bello's, um, you know, photo shoot. And then she changed and overnight she became magnificent and all that. How, and, and that's a classic story of rebranding, right? You were something, but you become something bigger, something better that you, people can relate with, that people pay you more money because this is it. You can't be doing the same thing and earn more money. And I'll show you in a bit. Let's go on. Come on, follow me quickly. I'm, I'm almost done. Don't worry. Um, number one, how do you do that? You downsize to a niche. A lot of us are trying, you know, and it happened to me for years. All right. 
And you say, I'm a life coach, I'm a life coach, I'm a life coach. Nah. The simplest way I discovered years ago, and I want you to see this, and, and it's right here, uh, that the simplest way to eradicate competition is to downsize into a niche. You know, a lot of us think, you know what, the more I do, the better it is. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Focus on something. Focus on one thing first, right? When you focus on one thing first, guess what? That one thing, become a master at that thing, become a mistress at that one thing, and then you can add the others at it, right? Because you see, a lot of people say, you know, I'm multi-gifted. You know, Dr. Spree, I'm, 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 I'm multi-gifted. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do... No, you don't do all that together. My people will say, you don't, you don't put too many things on the fire. How do you focus on all of them? They get burnt, right? So you focus on one first. You, be, you become excellent at that one thing. And then you move to the other, right? So it's very important that you do that. you got to carve out your, your own niche. And somebody's asking Dr. Tupi, what's a niche? It's a unique area of speciality, all right? Unique area of speciality, all right? So a lot of people, uh, we have a lot of life coaches, but we also have business coaches. We've got health coaches, right? We've got mental health coaches. We've got, you know, in fact, that's even a niche under the health sector, right? Um, we've got um, sales coaches like I am, you know, I'm a business coach. I'm a sales coach. You know, we've got capacity development coaches and all those things, right? Oh, thank you, Taiwo. Thank you for your kind words. I'm happy. I'm glad, I'm glad your eyes are opening. And um, your, your niche should be synonymous to you and you alone. In other words, it's, it's got to have a bit of your personality in it. And you see, that's a funny thing about people. Um, people don't understand that your brand should actually involve you. Don't try to copy some, some, something or a brand or somebody because all of us copy, right? You don't try to become something that you are not. You don't try to become um, a brand that does not reflect your ideals, your value system, your belief system, all these things. These things are very key. You, it got, it's going to be you. <laughs> I was saying, you know I'm saying it's going to be you. So research has shown that owning a niche hmm, is the best way of combating your competition. You see, when you stand out, let me tell you something. God does not play dice with human lives. When God created you and made you the way you are, God did not make a mistake, right? The reason God didn't make you Beyonce or God didn't make you Jay-Z or God didn't make you Steve Harris or God didn't make you Balaji Babala or God didn't make you Bola, uh, Dr. Triple A is basically because God wanted you to have a very unique flavor, right? Because you see that flavor that you have, that originality is your brand. You know what I'm talking about? And you see, when you stand out, when you be yourself, you school, you sell more. And I'm telling you, um, when I was when I was growing, when I was growing, it, it was tough. It was tough because I had so many people to copyright. And um, you know, and that's another funny thing. A lot of us don't even copyright, we copy wrong. But the truth is, um, when you start to get confident with yourself then you become more, more confident and you start to, you know, tap into your inner self and then you begin to become more original. So um, you wouldn't see anybody in the world talk the way I do or behave the way I do. I mean, um, I can be very funny. I can be very hilarious. I can be very naughty. I can be very, you know, but that's just me. You know, it, it's just who I am, right? So um, it's a way of beating and battling your competition. How is your product offering different, different from other people's, right? That is very, very key. You understand what I'm talking about? It's very, very key. Look at channels. Channels TV and Silverbird. If I'm going to ask you, what makes Channels TV different from Silverbird? Let me help you out. Channels TV, it's all about what? They're all about news. They are the African CNN, right? But Silverbird is all about entertainment. It's all about entertainment. So they're all about what? Entertainment. Look at them. They're the same industry, right? Same media, but in different niches, right? CNN is in what? They are handling news. So they focus on news, run news, you know, follow news everywhere and all that. So, so, so yeah, but Silverbird is about entertainment. They follow music, beauty pageants. They do, um, you know, movies. They do music stuff. They arrange all those things. And that's what it is, right? Even if you go to the Silverbird Galeria, that's what it is. It's all about entertainment. Right, so they're in the same industry, but they do different things. So you can be in the same industry, but you're doing different things, and that is very key. Because let me tell you something: when you're doing something your competitors are not doing, it helps you to sell more. That means you're you're building a niche for yourself. Beautiful. Uh, let's look at some quick case studies. Like I was talking about, kicked by Tosan. Um, Tosan 
is um, a very wonderful man who studied architecture, um, you know, um, understood CAD, you know, those who are engineers will know what I'm talking about. And Tosin actually, you know, builds cakes, it creates cakes. Um, let me show you what uh, something that Tosin created. Amazing. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the look at this very big cake. About 40 something story or so. There about that that Tosin created. Um, Tosin will sit down. Uh, you know, people have been to um parties that Tosin had done, and they showed up only to discover that the cake that Tosin built was a chandelier that it was up on, on top of the head. Can you imagine that? Imagine so um you go to um, a, a lady who's a fashion designer and, and she's having a graduation, right? And um, you're looking, all of you are looking for the cake and only for you to discover that the cake was a sewing machine that you guys are looking at, that you thought was part of the presentation. That's how crazy Tosan, you know, is. You know, um, he, he created a niche that was so real life. Look at this case, very real life stuff. Uh, and all that. Another person is House of Tara. Maybe some of you heard of Tara Durotoye. Um, look at what she does. Um, she, 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 she's, she's the first to break on week in Africa and even the world. Uh, created her own perfume inspiration, created her own lines and all that. People had been doing makeup over. They've been doing makeup, uh, makeup artists and all that. But she changed the face of everything. Look at the Roko TV, Jason Njoku. All right. Um, look at that guy. Um, you know, he came in, changed the face of everything. Now he's even called the Netflix of Africa, right? It changed the face of everything, um, got all the licenses from all the necessary people. In fact, people are running into that, that industry right now and all that. Wow. All right, look at this woman. Mwah, I love her. Um, I, I call her my mommy. Uh, Femiola Yebi is the CEO um, at World of, my World of Bags. Right? I worked with her um, for, uh, uh, for a time period when I worked with her then um, as the head of marketing. And, um, you know, she, she's doing well. She's a multi-talented, multi, um, um, multi multi-award winner all globally. She has raised thousands of, of female entrepreneurs all over Africa. She's worked with Bank of Industry. She's worked with, um, uh, you know, people all over the world. I mean, you should Google and, and see what she's doing. From Ibadan, from IBCD to the world. She sells her bags in Milan, in Italy, in France, and all that. You look, you know what? Let me show you her bags. Let me show you her bags so that you see what I'm talking about. Um, look at it, look, look, look at these bags. Now, she, this bags, um, so my water bag is a design and um, and bag manufacturing, um, you know, company, right? And then, but she, there's a brand that, that she patents, right? Which is Femi and Bags. And this the, this bag actually competes with ba with bags all over the world, from me bad onto the world. Go read her story, right? Now, so people make and bags, right? But look at her bags. I've never seen Mrs. Olaye B put on a black handbag. You will never see a black handbag. You'll never catch her, uh, you know, with a black handbag, I'm telling you. Um, it, it, it's, it's just part of her niche and all that. Look at Soul Rebels. Look at name. That's what I'm talking about. Femi handbags. Look at that's a great name, isn't it? Soul Rebels. Iroko TV, right? Look at those names, right? They are unique names. Um, um, you know, unique names. Look at Bethlehem Alemu. She was born in, 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 in no Ethiopia, right? And she created Soul Rebels. And now she, she even has, um, you know, um, some other things that she does. And she makes the shoes from recycled material. So she's in two industries at the same time, right? Uh, it's, so it's, it's powerful when you can, you know, you, you, can, you can cover the niche for yourself. And when you do that, but you, you cover the niche by creating unbeatable value in areas where people won't. Look for areas that your competitors are not doing anything or they just don't want to go into it and go into it and become the light in that darkness, right? Oh, my. I'm taking so much time. Three building blocks. Identify an underserved market. If you're going to create your niche, identify an underserved, underserved, sorry, underserved market, all right? So begin your market research. Visit all your, I mean, visit your industry. Turn the stones upside down. You know, check everywhere. Find out. Go to see your competition. Find out what are they having problems with. What's affecting their sales? What's limited? What's what works for them? What is not working for them? What is it that they don't have that people need? Use the blue ocean strategy. Don't just stay. You know, the, the red ocean strategy says you know, stay. You know, the place where there's a lot of comp no, no, no. Go into, go deep into the ocean and find out where the real stuff is. You know what? The bigger the problem you solve 
the bigger the mula you make, right? So that's the thing. You've got to do things that people are not willing to do. Find out. That will help you. Number two, develop a product to serve that market. So you um, look for an underserved market, create a product for that underserved market. Um, and then three, uh, make that product available and desirable for that market. Package it right for them, right? Um, Peter Docker said that the aim of marketing is to do what? Is to create a product that when the customer sees it, the customer says, you know what? Oh my, this is just for me. I mean, this fits me, right? This, this fits my status, right? Don't go and create a, a, a poor product for a premium client. Mm, enough said. You know what I'm talking about. So, so move on. Um, so, so look at this. Uh, let me give you a bit of position. So when people ask me what I do, uh, I reply and I tell them I'm not just a life coach. I tell them I'm a success hack scientist, right? I'm, that's packaging, right? And you see, when I tell them that, it provokes an interest. They want to know, what, 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 what is the meaning of that? Come on, Dr. Dribbler, tell us. What is success? What's the success hack, hack scientist? And I tell them that I act success codes, right? So if, if, if you come to me with your business, I act the success codes and I give you success codes principles in simplified form that will help your business. That's what I've been doing, you know, from the beginning till now, you know, hacking success codes, telling you the secrets that will help you what stand and all that. What are the advantages of you having a niche that allows you to provide upgrades of the same service? Your cost of, uh, competitors have been offering the same service, but you provide an upgrade of the same service, right? And that's part of it. Um, it allows you to target your customers better and get better, greater results than you would have if you remained in the mainstream where your customers are major players. And then also by concentrating your marketing efforts to a more effective reach a specific audience for your work, what happens? You can increase your sales while gaining recognition as an expert within that chosen field. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, sir. I'm looking at it. Okay, number two, apart from creating a niche, is that you need to create a wow system of delivery. This is very important. Become the best at serving your clients. Make sure your office has a, an aesthetic experience. Listen to your customers. You know, get you know, maximize the impact and the, the feedback that they give you. Offer top-notch service when you have when you're reaching out to these people. It's very, very important, right? Remember that small oaks will never catch big fishes, right? So that is very key. Wow. And of course, you need to ask these questions, right? You know what I'm gonna do. Um, with the permission of my host, Six Stance, um, I'm going to send you the PDF of this presentation because I might not be able to touch everything. Is that, is that okay for the audience? If that's okay for you, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. If that's good, if that makes you happy, let me know. All right. Um, but three, package yourself. Package the way you dress. Let me tell you something. The way you dress is the way you will be addressed. That is very important. You cannot dress like a suspect and expect that they'll treat you like a prospect. Package your business, package your staff, package your, your, your office, package your products and services. These things are key. The more beautiful you look, you know, research tells us that the more beautiful you look, the more people want to relate with you. Beautiful people actually attract more audience. Make noise. When we're growing up, they told us not to make noise. Let me tell you in business, you better make noise. Because the ones that are, that are the noise makers are the ones that people see. If you don't make enough noise, you don't get enough people. That is very key. All right? So um, let's move forward. Let's move forward quickly. And um, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. I'm so grateful uh, for this opportunity um, to speak with you. Thank you so much for giving me your attention, for paying your attention. Oh, wow. Right? So thanks a lot, of course. And um, uh, once again, thank you, for my, thank you to my host and the amazing people behind this amazing um, startup conference. I'm glad to be here again. I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope this was great for you as it was great for me. Thank you very much. And, and I love you. Mwah. Let's keep on making more money. Let's keep on impacting the world. Hi, my name is Balaji Babalola. I'm a capacity building strategist. I've been here for a while, you know, and I'm this kind of person that sought out for information and for knowledge. I've learned quite a lot of things in years gone by. But one of the most important lessons that Dr. Von King has taught me, you know, I was with him in the office one time. He spent like four or five hours talking that day. And he took me into his bath with a glass of water, very clean water. And he showed it to me, he said to me that this is exactly how we were when we all came into this world. All of us, you watching me, you were like that. The innocence was there. But he said as we kept growing, the environment in which we grow, the people we meet, 
the so good experiences we have and the not so good experiences also they had to us some in that process got contaminated you know the people we meet the experiences the family we grow up the background we had and all of that contaminated our mind that we lost the innocence so how do we get rid of this because if you do not alter that you might not do well in business you might not do well in marriage you might not do well in career you might not do well in most things because what affects us are not basically the things outside but the things that allow to stay inside of us so he said to me there is something difficult but it's very possible to do and he took me to his bath put the glass cup by the tap he opened the tap and as the water kept pouring into the tap there was this major purification. Every dirt inside the water started moving out, started going out, and they, at the end of it all, the water inside the cup was as plain as it was at the beginning. Now, he said to me that if any man would like to change his paradigm, would like to change the situation in which he is, he needs to look for information, you need to listen, you must be deliberate with the people you hang out with, you must be deliberate with the information you allow in, inside of you. You must be intentional about your growth. So pouring in intentionally the materials you need, the content you need, eating them up can actually eradicate whatever it is that is inside of you that has been contaminating you. So the same way he showed me that glass cup and at the end of it all, we have clean water, the innocence was restored. The same way you can also change your own life by listening to people that matter you've got to be intentional you can't just wake up and listen to anything you can't just wake up and go anywhere you've got to be intentional people are making it in business people are having great homes so don't say marriages are not working it depends on what you allow inside of you always remember this that it's not the things that are outside that contaminate us they are the things that we allow inside of us that matters so we live the intentional about your growth today. Thank you for watching. My name is Bola Dumabola and I am just your boy. Hello, hello, hello. It's beautiful to be connecting with each and every one of you through this medium. Well, I'm glad. The startup conference is here and we've had phenomenal speakers talk to us and really really educate us in several aspects that are crucial to entrepreneurship that are crucial to scaling our businesses uh well first of all i just want to say a huge thank you to uh dr triple a man you did a whole lot of justice right there <laughs> I really, really appreciated that. That was phenomenal. You know, talking about branding, that was phenomenal, sir. Like, I, I love that. Thank you very much, Alfred. Thank you so much. Look forward to your session. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's a reason why it's called the Startup Conference. Well, before I go there, my name is Alfred Baker Ngwejume. Well, Alfred Baker Ngwejume is a facilitator. Funny enough, a part of me you may not know, I'm an actor. Alfred Baker is a grassroots sports developer. Alfred Baker is an entrepreneur. And I, I think I'd like to stick with the entrepreneurial aspect of Mr. Alfred Baker for the sake of the startup conference. You know, we have three caveat points. Evolve, innovate, and disrupt. Evolve, innovate, and disrupt. Now, um, before you start something, you have to create it. And when you create, you eventually get to scale. So now we are undertaking the startup conference and I wouldn't want to take it for granted that, or I wouldn't want to just generalize that every person I'm addressing right now, every person in the audience is a business owner. We probably have persons that are that have prospectus in setting up businesses. We probably have persons right here that are already into business, 
and want to scale their businesses. We already have persons here that have probably generated the ideas for, you know, starting up a business or idea for an enterprise and have not even started yet. So um, I'll be taking you through the journey of creativity, opportunities, and ideas for enterprises. Please, uh, why don't you just get your pens and uh, I'm sure you have your jotter right there because uh, I'm taking you through a journey. And I believe this is the basics that will enable us to come uh, to come up with something creative and innovative that we could get to show forth in the marketplace. You know, my uh, my my honourable speaker, Dr. Triple A, talked. He hammered so much about branding and even rebranding. Now, branding and packaging, believe you me, is practically everything. He said something. You cannot dress up like a suspect and expect to be addressed like a prospect. That's my take home from what he you know what he just taught us that's pr practically my major take home in in the area of branding he talked about so today i'm going to be hammering on creativity opportunities and ideas for enterprise now um i'd like you guys uh all my audience look for a word a word that is synonymous to the word creativity i'm sure several words come to your mind but i would like to ask what is that foremost word that comes to you that is very synonymous with the word creativity let's 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 do more like a background definition of the word creativity what comes to your mind when you hear the word creativity I'm sure someone out there would say making or at best birthing. Probably someone out there would say innovation. Yes, if you had any of these thoughts, you're absolutely right. You're on the path. And um, um, uh, before we delve into that, because out of all of these words that are synonymous with the word creativity, I'd like to pick on one particular word, which is innovation, because innovation is key when it comes to establishing an enterprise. Now, um, these are the basic objectives of this study that I believe and uh, I hope that at the end of this particular session, you will be able to define creativity and establish its connection with innovation identify factors that can inhibit and enhance creativity now uh let that not seem like too bogus a grammar let's just say advantages and disadvantages of creativity like or uh, or better put what could impede what could uh, uh, what could be stand as an impediment to creativity and what could stand as an enhancement to creativity. Now, in the process of this, I would like you to, you know, take out your own time to brainstorm. Um, and um, in the process of this, which is equally part of the objectives of this topic, um, we're going to demonstrate that willingness to apply creativity in identifying enterprise ideas and in problem solving. You know, my uh, one of my co-speakers, the content surgeon, um, Mrs. Oge Ikoro, hammered so much on problem solving, idea creation. And indeed that is key in establishing an enterprise or in generating ideas that are suitable for an enterprise. Now, it is part of our objectives that we're going to equally systematically narrow down ideas for enterprise, for enterprises and settle on at least one or two good ideas for your enterprise. So um, please uh, join me on this journey and let's, let's, let's move. Now, um, 
I believe, I believe um, basically you would have seen a word, like I mentioned earlier, the word innovate as a word synonymous with the word creativity. Yes, the word innovate as a word synonymous with the word creativity. Now, if you ask yourself basically, because you know, if you're not, if you don't have a clear cut definition of what these words mean, then you may be seeing them as one and the same. And down the road, you may end up having some hitches and glitches in establishing your enterprise. Now, yes, creativity is synonymous with the word innovation, but what is creativity in the first place? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd want to look at creativity as the ability to develop new ideas and discover new ways of solving problems in the face of opportunities with regards to business. What did I say? The ability to develop new ideas and discover new ways of solving problems in the face of opportunities. Now, creativity is idea generation and being creative is being able to generate or come up with ideas. Now, contrary to popular beliefs, creativity is not some rare talent or gift reserved for a small minority. No, creativity is for all of us. We are all creative. Now, you may be wondering, you may look at some set of people and some set of persons like, uh, sorry, let me use a very, very popular <laughs> example, Michael Jackson. You know, I've heard some people say such persons come once in an epoch. <laughs> Do you know what? Michael Jackson is just a product of extensive training, extensive creativity. That's just who Michael Jackson was. Now, um, you know, some people are just more intentional than others. And you see, one thing is, we all have that innate sense of creativity in each and every one of us. Everyone is creative to some level. Even you that I am addressing right now, you are creative to some particular level. However, some individuals have a greater passion for and commitment to creativity than others. Why? Why does it look like some other person is actually carving out their niche, like Dr. Triple A said, which has enabled them to stand out in the marketplace above other competitors than yourself. Why? What happened? Do you know what they just did? They just took out time. They were just much more intentional about their sense of creativity. That's just it. So you know what? Creativity just deserves some more time. It just deserves some more time. Now we're all creative, we're all talented, but you know what? Why does it look like Mr. A is, God, he's out of the world creative than myself. He's maximally innovative than myself. He just took some more time. He just took out some more time and decided that look, in this particular area, I'm gonna carve a niche, like Dr. Triple A said, and I'm gonna be the best at this niche I'm carving. So you know what? When it comes to creativity, we are all creative persons. Now, innovation, like a word that I know is, I would say the closest and most synonymous to the word creativity. Innovation, what does it mean to be, to innovate? Innovation can be described as creativity that is implemented <laughs> do you understand it is just putting your idea into practice while creativity is a thinking process innovation just adds value to the idea which would have ordinarily remained as a mere thought so i want to look at creativity as a value-adding process Oh, sorry, pardon me. Innovation as a value adding process to creativity. So let's just say innovation is just putting creativity to work. I hope you're with me. You understand? So, on an illustrative note, if an idea 
is likened to a seed. Then innovation is the plant that results from planting and nurturing that seed. Let me go there again. On an illustrative note, if the idea is likened to a seed, then innovation is the plant that results from planting and nurturing the seed. I also, also want to look at something. Let's look at the word in intelligence. Now, this is this is this is cut out exclusively. Intelligence. What, what do we call? Oh, he's an intelligent person. She's intelligent. All my co-speakers, Dr. Triple A, Oge Ikoro, Mobolaji Mofolusho, they are exceptionally intelligent persons. How what, what do we define as intelligence? What do we define as intelligence? I'm sure you all have diverse def definitions of what intelligence is. Someone out there might say, oh, he has a very high IQ, therefore he's intelligent. Oh, he's intelligent because he's a genius. <laughs> but I'll just say intelligence is just the ability to acquire and utilize knowledge. The ability to acquire and utilize knowledge. That's intelligence. Look, there's no, look, I, 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 I don't want to say anybody was born to be exclusively intelligent over the other. Okay, let's just look at a clear example. Let me just use a, an example that I believe we're all almost familiar with because the filament of the bulb we, that has given us light today, which came from Sir Thomas Edison, came as a result of over 999 failures. And you and I know that if he had given up, let's just say he, if he had given up as, at his uh, 599th time, <laughs> he would have been looked upon as a failure. But most of all, forget that the word fail is an acronym for first attempt in learning. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine if Sir Thomas Edison did not look at it from that perspective, at the 1,000th time, probably we wouldn't have had the filament we have in the light bulb that is making you see me as I communicate with you right now at this very minute. So what am I trying to say in essence? That intelligence is just acquiring and utilizing the knowledge, you, acquiring and utilizing knowledge, basically. Acquiring and utilizing knowledge, basically. And you know what? It plays a part in creativity and it can lead to a deeper understanding and can improve creativity. What does intelligence do? Intelligence helps us in selecting problem, um, sorry, problem solving options correctly. Yes, there are several options to solving problems, but what does it help you do? It helps you in solving in selecting problem solving options correctly. And you know what that does? It aids the creative process of idea generation. Do you know you don't need to be the most intelligent person in the room? No, you don't. You don't need to be the most intelligent person in the room. Some people who did not succeed in school today are incredibly practical and talented entrepreneurs today. I'm sure you have a whole lot of examples. In fact, even on this app right now, we're enjoying right now, or one of the apps we're streaming on right now, you know his story. Mark Zuckerberg's story is out there for the world to see. Look, you don't have to be the most intelligent person in the room. You don't. But all you need to do is acquire and utilize knowledge. Acquire and utilize knowledge. Uh, before we had mentioned 
Okay, we're right back. Innovation, which is the closest synonym to the word creativity, can be described, like I said, as creativity implemented. When you put an idea into practice, that is what is called innovation. Now, while creativity is a thinking process, like I said, innovation adds value to what would have otherwise remained as a mere thought, you know? So um, creativity is idea generation, while innovation is putting those ideas to work. So they are closely related and are very, very crucial to the micro entrepreneur of this day and age. I hope you're following me very, very closely. Now, um, let's go further. Um, I, I, like I told you, back to our key topic, which is creativity, opportunity, and ideas for enterprises. Now, what are opportunities? What are opportunities? I'd like somebody to just hit your keypads and just give it give a definition of what opportunities are. What do you think is an opportunity? When they say, oh, he's got an opportunity, I've got an opportunity, they have got maximum opportunities to themselves. What do you think? What do you think is an opportunity? I'd like somebody to just, just hit your keypad. Just tell me what you think is an opportunity. Yes, what do you think is an opportunity? Um, I, I, I like to read up from someone. Someone just hit something. What do you think is an opportunity? Oh, good. Good. Um, an opportunity, basically, I would say, or let's just look at it from this perspective. When new ideas are born, like we like like, like I told you, um, ideas are born out of creativity. Creativity is our idea generation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So when new ideas are born to solve an identified need, it presents an opportunity. <clears throat> excuse me, please. So for an entrepreneur, for the entrepreneur to use those ideas to satisfy express needs and wants of potential customers, the opportunity now becomes a motivating factor, factor for the micro entrepreneur because the customers might be willing and ready to pay. So therefore, what do we look at an opportunity as? We just look at, at an opportunity as a motivation or as a gap in the marketplace. Yes, my co-speaker, the content surgeon, Mrs. Oge Koro, hit at that. An opportunity is basically identifying a gap in the marketplace. Identifying a gap in the marketplace. So now, like I like like our caption says, our, our, our topic for the day goes creativity. When you generate that idea. You think of the opportunity that is available to you in which you could implement that idea you have generated. So now, in identifying that idea, you would have cited a gap in the marketplace, a gap with which you need to fill. My co speaker said, solving a problem. There are problems all over the places, and instead of you being a co-complainant like we always do in the country, complain, bad government, and so on and so forth. Why don't you be a problem solver? Look, these problems are blessings in disguise. And problems are opportunities. The flip side of a problem is an opportunity. Yes, when there was darkness, Sir Thomas Edison failed 999 times, but at the 1,000th time, we had the light filament. And that's why you can see me and I can see you today. And you know what? It was a problem. The flip side of a problem that 
generated an opportunity for him. So when you identify a need and that need can satisfy the needs and wants of your potential customers, that, 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 def, that automatically presents to you an opportunity. So an opportunity now becomes the, motiva the motivating factor for a micro entrepreneur because your customers will be willing and ready to pay for that service or for that idea that you have generated. Okay, now, um, how do you get to validate? How do you get to validate new business opportunities? How do you get to validate new business opportunities? Now, when you collect and analyze market data to identify potential opportunities, that's part of the process or part of the processes of validating new business opportunities. You collect and analyze market data. How do you collect and analyze market data? You throw it out there in the marketplace. You look out for the gap that hasn't been filled in the marketplace. You look out for what needs are available in the marketplace. You conduct interviews with potential customers to validate the market problem and product concept. Yes. So number one, you collect and analyze market data to identify potential opportunities. Number two, you conduct interviews with potential customers to validate the market problem and product concept. Number three, in conducting a comprehensive market and competitive analysis to define the overall strategy, you get to justify the investment. You conduct a comprehensive market and competitive analysis to define the overall strategy and justify the investment. Now, you, uh, number four, you work to achieve that first product order. Yes, that first product, otherwise it called first because indeed that idea you have generated is exclusive to you. Now, even if it's an idea you generated that is already existing in the marketplace, like my, uh, uh, my, the speaker that came before me, Dr. Triple A, you carve that niche. So that makes it a first product order because you have already carved a niche or rather you have already devised something new, something exclusive, something anathema to the market. So that becomes the first product order. So you now work towards achieving that first product order. Then what do you do? Finally, you consolidate by designing a plan a plan to attract those first set of customers. Let me come again with that last point. You consolidate by designing a plan to attract those first set of customers. You consolidate by designing a plan, a plan, to design, I'm um, sorry, to attract those first set of customers. You know, designing a plan, um, I, I, I'd have loved to look into what we call the BMC, a business model canvas with you. But for the sake of time, probably we'll look at that some other time by the, the special grace of God and by the graces of the wonderful organizers of this beautiful startup conference, which is quite educative and, you know, mind opening. You know, so um, you consolidate on designing a plan to attract your first set of customers. Now, let me just throw in a few questions to you. Um, let's just brainstorm together. Let's brainstorm to generate some business ideas. Just think of something. Think of a business idea right now as we, as we interact. Think of a business idea, anything. Maybe exist an existing business idea, might be a non-existent business idea, but just think of something. Something. Yes, let's brainstorm together. Okay. Um, anything could come to your mind. Now let's look at maybe something like waste management. Somebody may have maybe thought of waste management. 
as an example. And maybe someone on the other end looking at waste management as a business idea, which is an already existent business idea, because we have waste management all over the place. Now, most waste managers, what do they what do they do? They just manage waste. They come, pick up the waste, and dispose. But probably someone is thinking to himself, how about recycling? How about recycling? How about recycling all of these wastes and converting it into something useful? That's more or less carving a niche. That's more, more or less generating an idea from even an existing idea, but taking it, turning it up a notch further. You know, um, Bill Gates is one classic example of an individual that <laughs> generates ideas like there is no box. You know, people say, uh, think outside the box, but that man thinks like, indeed, there is no box. I'm sure probably some of you may have seen his documentaries on generating or, 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 or getting fresh water, as in getting clean, portable, drinkable, consumable water from sewage. That sounds crazy, yeah? From poop. Yeah, from poo. <laughs> That's crazy. But you know what? I'm sure ordinarily nobody, everybody would be like, everybody would have been like, come on, poo. How on earth? But you know what? Someone sat back and thought to himself that from, from waste, I could generate portable water. That's, that's off the chain. That's off the chain when it comes to generating ideas. So we, we give it up to him for that. And what stops each and every one of us from thinking outside the box or thinking indeed as if there's no box? We can all do that. We can all think exclusively. And that is why, look, we, 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 we are blessed with the intelligence to think, to acquire and utilize knowledge. We are blessed with we are blessed with, 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 with opportunities as a result of the problems that are so prevalent amongst each and every one of us today. You and I, you, you'll bear me witness that indeed, look, look, we live, we live, we live, we live in crazy times, but people are still doing exceptionally well and nothing stops each and every one of us from staying at the zenith of all that we experience in the country we find ourselves in today. Yes, yeah, so um, now let's just, um, let's go further. Um, in generating an idea, one thing we must consider, because it's not just enough to generate an idea, which amounts to creativity or which defines creativity, it's not just enough to imp implement that idea but one motivating factor you and i know for sure is the profitability of the ideas we've generated now dr triple a talked about monetizing or basically making money from your brand now if you are if there's no profitability in the idea you've generated what's the essence of generating it in the first place did you just generate an idea to fill up the space or to add to the list of ideas that have already been generated? No. So basically, micro entrepreneurs have to refine their business ideas to ensure that they focus on the ones that have verifiable potentiality for viability and profitability. So while the business owner would naturally want to pursue an idea, that excites and interests him, it has to be balanced with the potential to make money because you're out here to make money. Now, you and I know making money, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. If at the end of the startup conference, you don't disrupt 
disrupt that word disrupt you don't evolve you don't innovate and you don't disrupt then probably would have failed but i know we we're not going to fail i know that in the long run you are going to begin to see profitability in that which you have set your hands to do or that which you intend to start up so we need to consider the following steps when it comes to refining and validating our business idea now our, our business ideas born out of creativity need to be refined they need to be refined and validated now how do you do these things let me just give you a few bullet points number one you need to research and collect more information and data about the business idea you need to as number two you need to establish that idea you need to establish that that idea is original and unique to you or else refine and alter it let me say that again. You need to establish that that idea that has been generated is original to you and unique to you, or else refine it if it's not original. Like I said, you could leverage on an existing idea and refine it or alter it. Now, collect number three, collect specific information about your customers and competitors now this is very 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 important you need to get specific information about your customers and competitors it is very 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 important you don't just venture into a business you don't just generate an idea and say okay um mr a is into oil and gas and I, as Mr. B, I want to venture into oil and gas. Now, what information have you gathered about Mr. A's modus operandi in his sales or transactions of oil and gas? Now, what is it that, that you intend to do differently when we talk about alteration in, in the previous point? What is it you're going to do differently from what Mr. A is doing? How do you intend to carve a niche? Going back to Dr. Triple A's uh, 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 speech on branding. How do you get to carve a niche? What do you get to do differently from what Mr. A is doing? This is the reason why you need to get specific information. Look, every micro entrepreneur, trust me, in your idea generation process, you're more or less a spy. You're more or less doing the work of the DSS. <laughs> because you need to get specific information about your competitors to know how you could get to carve a niche and do things differently. Number four, you need to group your potential customers into market segments, taking notes of their wants and preferences. Now, you and I would definitely agree or come to terms that customers have their different wants and preferences take for instance um I'm, I'm the ceo principal partner of now gas energy and you know we do 24-hour distribution of liquefied petroleum gas okay now our customers have different preferences some would like swap when it comes to serving them lpg like you come swap their cylinders some would like dispensing on the spot some would like some wouldn't even like uh, uh, lpg dispensed at their locality they would prefer okay well we'll come right down to your plant or wherever your plant is situated we'll come right there and get our cylinders refilled so you must get to understand the preferences you must get to understand the wants you have to take note of the wants and preferences of your potential customers. You need to group your customers into market segments. And when you group your customers into market segments, understand their wants and their preferences, that will enhance the profitability of the idea. 
that you have adopted. Now you need to deepen the knowledge of your customers' needs and buying habits. You need to deepen the knowledge of your customers' needs and buying habits. Now you will agree with me, customers have buying habits. I'm sure you'll agree with me that customers have buying habits. They have their needs. They have their preferences. You need to deepen your knowledge about your customers' needs and their buying habits. Why do I say so? Some customers, some customers will prefer buying probably in little quantities. Some like to buy in bulk. Some probably will come. Probably you have uh, customers that are with the civil service. You know definitely when they want to come and buy from you, they're going to come by at the end of the month. You need to study their buying habits. You need to study their preferences. And that will aid you in enhancing the profitability of the idea you have generated for your business. Now, I cannot underemphasize or overemphasize understanding who your competitors are and their behaviors. Yes, let me use an example. At some point, it was <laughs> it was peak, peak milk. Let, let me use that word, the peak brand. And in fact, every kid in every home would sing, it's peak, peak, milk at its peak, always so good for you. <laughs> but you know what? There came cowbell. And you know what? Someone just suggested an idea. Come on. Why don't we put these things in sachets? Why don't we beat our competitors in the line of affordability or on the grounds of affordability? And they began to put this, they began to put milk in sachets. And you know what? That created a high level of competitiveness. What did the other brand eventually do? You know what they did? They just understood their competitors' behavior. And you know what? They use that in satisfying a need on the grounds of affordability in the marketplace. And what did that eventually do? It enhanced the profitability of the idea that they adopted. What was the idea? Putting the milk in sachets. Putting the milk in sachets. <laughs> okay, finally, you need to understand that only business ideas which customers are ready to pay for are the right ones that need to be selected as the preferred business enterprise. You need to understand that only business ideas which customers are ready to pay for are the right ones and needs to be selected as the preferred business enterprise. We cannot underemphasize on profitability because profitability is key in generating a business enterprise. Um, um okay so um i would like us to just finally because time is basically uh uh far spent or let me just say let me use the word far utilized let me just ask a question how do you generate business ideas how do you generate business ideas? 
So you and I know that successful enterprises start with good entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ideas and a vision of what they want to achieve. Now, how can ideas be developed? You could just hit the chat box and let us know how ideas could be generated. How could you, what, what makes you generate an idea in the first place? Or how can you generate an idea in the first place? Now, let me just give you a few, or let me just, uh, let me just hit out a few ways, ideas. I think ideas could be generated. I think ideas could be generated from extensive thinking. Yes. I think ideas could be generated from extensive thinking. Um, ideas could be generated from work. Ideas could be generated from research. Ideas could be generated from observation. Observation. Right now, probably you're observing me right now and you're looking at my glasses and saying, I think probably if he had glasses that could fit differently, probably that could have enhanced his reach in interacting with his audience. You just observed and generated an idea. <laughs> ideas could be could be generated from education ideas could equally be, be be generated from your experience ideas could be generated from your passion ideas could be generated from your talent ideas could be generated finally like i said we cannot overemphasize or even underemphasize generating an idea from analyzing your competitor's business. Analyzing your competitor's business. You know, so basically these are ways in which we could generate ideas. And trust me, in generating these ideas and in ensuring and putting in those practical steps in ensuring the profitability of these ideas, trust me, will be at the zenith in the marketplace. We would be at the peak in the marketplace. So basically we have looked at, you know, this topic, this topic basically has just looked at, has just been devoted to looking at the place of creativity in enterprise creation. And um, well, uh, for the sake of time, I believe we have looked into creativity ideas and um, opportunities in, in um, enterprise creation. And I believe that you have at least taken something with you, if not everything, but at least you have taken something. And um, I believe that all of these objectives that we have on the list, especially in understanding the place of creativity in idea generation and understanding that in idea generation profitability should be put into place because we're all you know we 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 in in the application of of, of creativity that's talking about innovation profitability is key is key and um well i believe we, we all have what we're you know our, our take home for today so without much ado, thank you so much for your time. You know, I've, I've, trust me, I feel so good. I just wish I could see each and everyone's faces here and now. I want to say a, an awesome thank you to, um, you know, the organizers of the startup conference. It's been phenomenal. It's been very, very impactful, even for me as a facilitator. Learning from my co-facilitators has been wonderful, trust me. I just want to say thank you once again for being such a phenomenal audience. I believe you have taken something home with you. And I just want to sit back, relax someday and hear that one person that listened or that came uh, or rather that registered for the startup conference came up with a billion dollar idea that generated billions of dollars that came up with an idea that became a marvelous enterprise. 
thank you so much for listening. I I, I feel so elated <laughs> right here. And look, trust me, I'm exceptionally happy. Thank, thank you for you. the organizers. Thank you for being such a phenomenal audience. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you thank very you. much, Alfred. Thank you. I I was saying thank to the other you. speakers at the back end that you are the professor in our midst. Out of the four speakers, <laughs> you are the professor. Thank you very much. This is extensive, you. and you took your time thank to actually you. break it down to simplest form. Thank Anybody you. can understand everything you said. Thank you so much. Wow. You know, for the sake of those thank watching, you. I love sharing our story, how we met. How did I meet Alfred? I was at a conference in Abuja. He was there also. Then he walked up to me, and I want this to encourage someone because you might be putting things online and you feel like someone is not watching. So he, he walked up to me and he said, he called my name and he said, is that you? I said, yes. He said, I posted something on Facebook that really inspired him, that touched him. And in fact, he recounted it. He tried to say the text to me the way I wrote them, which was very impressive for me. And that was how we met. So really, when you put the content out, don't think people do not notice. It might be one person that content actually touches, you know, but just keep doing it. That was how I met him, almost going to be 10 years soon, you know, and he's been an amazing man since then. I've been following him and I've seen the consistency. He has a beautiful family. Thank you. Wonderful kids and he's doing great. Dr. Triple A. My brother. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank How you, you doing? for being a blessing. <laughs> thank you for impacting the people. Thank you for transferring the thank you so much. and the knowledge you have. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, brother. Thank you, so, you much. so much. So, thank guys, you. thank you very much. I want to say thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. That followed us since yesterday. Okay, wherever you are, I know you are at the back end watching. Thank you very much for the session we had yesterday it's still i mean everybody's still making reference it was a hot session. it was a hot session that session was I hot tell you, i tell you ah. i tell you <laughs> now i got a notification that we should have um well, let, let me read this out <laughs> uh my my tech director said we need this we should hold a full business makeover retreat for business owners wow he said we should look at that. So we might be looking at that and it might be coming any moment soon. But for those watching, I would like to remind you okay. of the one business, one dollar business cost that I'm having for April. If you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, you have an idea, you want to start an idea, don't miss the one dollar business class. It's going to be in April. More details on my page. Follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and get more of the details of whatever it is I share. Follow all these amazing speakers. I am Dr. Triple A on Instagram, um, Alfred Baker on Instagram, and Oge Ikoro on Instagram. Once you check my page, you will see their handles there. They, they are amazing guys, follow them. And you know, like I said earlier, the things we bring inside will actually eradicate the things that are contaminating us from the inside. So get more information, soak it in. You know, a couple of years ago, I asked my pastor and I said, sometimes I read, I do not, I do not um, remember everything from page one till the end. And he said to me that, yes, keep reading because some of the things you're reading are in your subconscious mind. The day you need it, you bring it out somehow and you yourself will be wondering, how did I get that wisdom? And it's because of the things you've read over the years. So you might be watching this conference right now. You feel like, it's, I, I do not need it right now. I tell you, just digest it. And it, you might you, you might not know when next there will be an opportunity for you to bring out some of these things you've heard. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone. This is where we draw the curtain of the startup conference. It's been amazing. The last three weeks, Woo! my team, I want to say thank you to my team members. They've been amazing. The volunteers have been amazing. Awesome. My staff awesome. has been amazing. I mean, I mean, every day we put out the content, every morning, every evening, and they've been consistent, you know. So I really want to say thank you to everybody that has been on this thing. And here we draw the curtain. I want to say good night to everyone. Last shot from you, Alfred Baker. Yes, sir.
Last shot, well, just um, one word for the people. Okay, uh, people, look, um, I just want to say, I want to leave you with these words. Um, you don't give up except you have tried. Don't give up. Never give up, no matter what it is. Just know that whatsoever idea it is that has come to your mind, implement that idea. Look, for it to have come to your mind, it definitely means that there's a way out. There's an innovative yeah. way yeah. in which that yeah. idea yeah. can be put to work. Yeah. I leave you with this. Yeah. All right. Dr. Chipule, one word. Yeah, you know what? I would have loved to drop one big wise word, but you know what? I just follow what works. I'm telling you, I follow what works. Um, Alfred, honestly, your session was powerful. I had to, you know, go behind the scenes to just begin to just meditate on them. Very powerful. I must appreciate you. And thank you, Oge. Okay. But I want to leave, I want to leave people with this. I want to leave people with this that look, let me tell you something. It's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. Yeah. I'm telling you, um, and mm. I heard this first from Steve Harris. Um, then I discovered he got it from Felagro Toy. But the truth of the matter is, honestly, that is the truth. A lot of us have lost a lot of value. We've lost out in life because we don't believe in what God has given to us. It's not what you don't have. You already have something. There's something in you that is your business idea. The dollars you're looking for, it's already in you. The value you want to create is already in you. Just take what you have, refine it, make it the best version that you can, and watch yeah. how your life changes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Love you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget what I started with. If you cannot cope with the eat in the kitchen, you are not going to eat. There are pressure everywhere in business. Whatever industry in which you are, you can take your own share and win always. Thank you. From all of us here, we say a good night. <laughs>